Dong Xiao Mahao. Hao. Lao Xi Hao. Lao Xi Hao. Hello. It is May the 3rd. Um, it is class five. Uh, we've got the rest of May. So in fact, I thought we had four more classes. We have five, which is great. Um, so uh, let us do the warm ups. So today with the warm ups, I'm going to add the, the warm ups at the beginning. And we'll actually go through them on the two eight counts. And I'll, I'll slow up and speed, slow down and speed up when we get to each of the transitions. But we're getting to the point, hopefully, where we'll be able to just go through the, the warm ups as a sequence. Uh, after class, I will email you uh, the calling. So I've got a little PDF that's got all the movements and there's a link to uh, Nancy and Mike actually doing this on, on YouTube if you want to have a reference, if you don't already have that. And Laura's joined us. Hey, Laura. And Sharon's on as well. So um, the, the beginning of this thing, and actually I will be mirroring so i'm assuming that you're facing the screen and if you raise your right arm we sort of mirror each other um we start shoulder width apart um the first thing is actually the head and we go um left and right so i'll go to your left right so one two three four five six seven eight and we do two sets of eight and then on four or five, or four or five, I'll go uh, forward back, and then we go one, two, three, four, forward and back, and then we do side to side, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's actually a movement in the, the form, the way that uh, Mike and Nancy's teacher taught it, which actually has the head circling around. I don't do that one because I don't trust that with my neck, so I skip that one. So let's start at the beginning. So everything is on two eight counts. Um, you can start with hands on hips. If you wish, I actually start with my arms straight because I get a bit more of a stretch on my neck that way, but that's your option. So uh, on two eight counts, looking to left and right, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, forward, back seven eight one two three four five six seven eight two two three four side to side seven eight one two three four five six seven eight two two three four flapping palms seven eight so this is with your arms out in front of you and we're going to move the wrists up and down and bend the knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, flapping in, seven, eight. So keep the arms in, still in front of you. We'll go out like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, flapping out, seven, eight. So start with your palms in front of your chest and throw them out as your legs bend and one two three four five six seven eight two two three four shoulders twist seven eight so we start going forward this way with the first set and then when we reverse we go back the other way so one two three four five six seven eight two two three four twisting back seven eight reverse one two three four five six seven eight two two three four arms push apart seven eight so we start with the hands in front of the chest and go open so bending the knees one two three four five six seven eight two two three four flapping palms seven eight so just flapping in front of the chest and then we'll flap at the sides one two three four five six seven, two two three four flap at the side seven eight one two three four five six seven eight two 
two, three, four, push ups to down, seven, eight. So push up and bend the knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, flap left and right, seven, eight. So on the first eight, we're gonna go to your left and then come to the middle. And then on the second eight, we'll go to the right. Try and not move your hips, but just move your shoulders. So this starts to warm up your waist. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four. Flap in front, seven, eight. Just continue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four. On stretch, rotate. And then we are going to go first to your left. So just step so that you're facing your left corner. We'll do eight. And so just like turn a, turn a faucet. And then when we get halfway, when we, after what we've done, two sets of eight, I'll go step, step, and turn to your right corner. And then we'll do another set of eight. And then we'll finish step, step, just bring your feet together and face to the front again. So step, step to your left side. And one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, two, the right, step, step, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, clench, fist, jump, step, step. So now we're going to, now we're going to do the sequence of things, always starting with weight on the left leg. So the first one will be the clench, fist, jump, then we'll do the heel step out, then we'll do the push up and down. And I'll slow down as we go from each, just so that everybody gets caught up again. So I'm going to start the clench fist jump, starting on your left leg. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four. Heel step out, seven, eight. So starting on the left leg, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, push up and down, seven, eight. So now we're gonna step out, touch with the heel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, two, three, four, back step, pull down, seven, eight. So now we're gonna keep, always start with weight on the left, step back with your right foot the first one the arm's going to go up second one it's going to come down third one it's going to clap so one two three four six seven eight two three four back step pull down seven eight one two three four five seven eight two two three, four, back step, hands clap, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, tip, toe, back swing, seven, eight. So here, we're just going to tip toe, so just lift the heels, and we're going to go down and just circle up like that. So starting here, tip, toe, back swing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four. Marching step, seven, eight, just march in place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two, three, four, and eight more. Seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and stop. And that's our warm up. And when you do it at a good pace, it only takes five minutes, which is a for me is a lovely way to just get warmed up, particularly when it's cold and you your body isn't awake yet. All right, so let's just review what we did last week and talk about what I plan to do today. So last week in our still practice, our standing practice, we started looking more and more at the breath and how the breath 
when you're in standing practice connects to your body shape and how the body shape helps with the breath and the breath helps with the body shape. In the footwork, we actually looked at how we go from uh, a bow stance to an empty stance and from an empty stance to a bow stance. Uh, and in fact, also, you know, how you go from a bow stance to a square stance or a parallel stance. We'll practice all of those. We'll probably spend 10 minutes just doing those kinds of things today. Just keep practicing those. Um, and then the third thing, you know, the third part of what we do at the moment is the waist exercises. So we actually added, so previous weeks, we'd done just going from side to side and stopping. And last week we started adding the circle and we did this horizontal figure eight. Uh, we're actually now also today going to look at the vertical circles. And that will mean we can do a, a figure eight that's actually tilted up at the sides. The other thing I hope we'll have a bit of time for, I want to introduce a little bit about the history of Young Family Tai Chi Chuan. Uh, there was news, I think, recently, I think I saw today about uh, kids uh, doing so badly in history and civics. American kids don't know their history anymore, um, which is staggering. Uh, but I, you know, you don't need uh, to know history to be a good citizen, but it helps in the same way you don't need to know Tai Chi Chuan history <laughs> to do Tai Chi Chuan, but I think it helps. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So that's the agenda for today. Before we start, are there any questions? Okay. So um, we're going to do our standing practice in bow stance today. Uh, and so this will give us an opportunity to review base bow stance and review standing practice. So let's just review the bow stance together. So you start with your weight on one foot, foot to the corner step out so the location where you put the foot is shoulder width apart whatever your shoulder width is these blue lines are my shoulder width and far enough forward that you can come back so don't lunge forward because then you can't come back the other thing that we talk about when we do um, bow stance is the shape of the legs so the front leg is bent uh, but not so far that it's over your toes the back leg is straight but not locked and the weight is 60% on the front, 40% on the back. Uh, our body setting, there are two, two variations. One is our torso is in line with the back leg. And the other is the torso is vertical. And to get the torso vertical and keep the waist relaxed, we actually open our hip. So it's from this position, our hip is almost straight, not quite. And then when we bring the torso up, we open our hips more to the corner. But in all those cases, your uh, body setting, you want to make sure that your tailbone is centered between your uh, uh, heels. So be careful that you don't lean over this way. And it's, it's unlikely that you'll go too far this way. So make sure you've got a nice arch, that you've got your weight full on, the, on both feet, what we call weight over the bubbling well. So the balls and the heels equal weight, and the inside and outside to not have your weight on the inside that your knees come in or bow-legged that the weight is on the outside of the foot. The last thing I just want to practice together because we'll be doing this in this practice is changing from one side to another. So perform a bow stance, doesn't matter which. Now we're going to come out of the bow stance by shifting our weight back, bringing the front foot in, putting it down so that it's at 45 degrees. So both feet are pointing to the corner picking up the other one, stepping it out, shoulder width, and going forward. So let's just do that together a couple of times. Shift your weight back, pick the front foot up, put it down, shift your weight onto the other leg, pick up the now free leg, shift forward. Come back, pick up this leg, shift your weight. Now actually the, the waist exercises that we did help you to shift your weight because I'm actually not moving my hips but I am moving my center of gravity by moving my chest to the side. Now I've got my weight on this foot, step out. So let's do that. So perform a bow stance. And let's do it as a forward bow stance to begin with. So your torso is leaning forward. 
you're in a bow stance and let's do this as standing practice so let's check our posture so your head is lifting up and we'll only do a minute head is lifting up feel your head is suspending the rest of your body so from the neck on down everything is sinking make sure your shoulders are sinking and your elbows are dropping Absorb the chest and slightly round the back by feeling as if your arms are part of a balloon in front of your chest. And relax the waist. And this is now going to be a slightly different angle from what you did when you were standing. Make sure that your lower back is open and extended. And what you should have now is because your elbows are extending away from your shoulders and from your spine, you're opening your back from left to right. And because your head is lifting and your waist is relaxing, you're opening your back from top to bottom, vertically. Let's change. So shift your weight back, pick up the front foot, put it down, shift the weight to that foot, which is now going to be the new back foot. As you shift your weight, you'll see that your body wants to open. If you're mirroring me, this will be to your right side. Step out forward and go into a bow stance. Check that your crotch is rounded, weight is over the bubbling well, so ball and heel even, not too much on the inside or the outside. So, posture checks, head up. So even though your torso is leaning forward, the front of your face is still vertical. So head up, shoulders sinking, elbows dropping, Slightly round the back by extending your elbows away from your shoulders, shoulders away from the spine. And relax the waist. So your waist is dropping down. Now we're going to go into the other bow stance. So shift your weight back, bring the front foot in, change your weight onto the other side, step out into a bow stance. But now I want your torso to be vertical. You're still looking towards the screen. You're still looking in the direction of your front foot. Your hip is open wider, and your torso is now vertical. You're not leaning forward like this. Your torso is vertical. Okay. Posture checks. Head up. Shoulders sinking, elbows dropping. Ex open the back by extending the elbows and relax the waist and change to the other side step out and make sure that your torso is vertical here so your chest is open to the side but your nose is pointing in the direction of your front foot head up shoulders sinking elbows dropping Open the back, absorb the chest, and relax the waist. And we're going to go back to that first bow stance again. Shift your weight back, pick up the front foot, change your footwork, shift your weight, step out. Now you're leaning forward, your chest is square, the direction you're facing. You know your posture. Now what I want you to do is just pay attention to your breathing. We'll just be here for 30 seconds. But I just want, to, want you to see if you can sense your abdomen opening, sinking as you breathe in and contracting as you breathe out. And you're breathing naturally through your nose, mouth gently closed, teeth. Gently touching, tongue on the roof of the mouth. Change footwork, shift your weight back, bring the front foot in, change your weight, open the chest, step forward, and come into your forward bow stance. So you're leaning forward here, torso in line with the back leg. I actually find it's useful to just look down my side, shoulder, hip, knee, 
that that's that's you want that to be a straight line if you don't have a mirror or an assistant that's the best you can do yeah and let's just pay it to earn so before we do breathing check your feet what's the weight like on your feet do you have your back heel nice and solid on the ground or is it lifting if your back heel is lifting push backward your hip slightly so that both feet are firmly planted and breathe in and out just evenly good we're going to come out of this the way we're going to come out we're going to drop the arms bring the back foot forward so that it's parallel to the front circle the arms up straighten the legs press down and then hands by the side of your legs there we are there's our standing practice what we'll do next week is we'll do standing practice in empty stance and then the week after that if all goes well we'll actually start doing the one-legged stance because we've been doing these practice these exercises for a while now the legs get stronger and we'll start working on one-legged stance okay before we go on we're going to start doing our moving practice now are there any questions Um, I am going to imagine that we're all facing the screen and so I'm going to go in the same direction as you uh, so that when I call the feet and things we're all going in the same direction I'm going to be going forwards so you'll be going towards the screen so if you have a little bit of space to back up let's do that so we're going to start in uh, the parallel stance the square stance we're not going to do the uh, the body immediately. We'll do that in a few minutes. So shift the weight slightly to your left. Open the right foot. Sink your weight down. Now we're going to step into a bow stance. Your feet are already shoulder width. So just pick up the left foot, step it out, and go into a bow stance. We're going to turn through 90 degrees. So to do that, shift the weight slightly. Turn your left foot through 45 degrees. Your feet are now parallel shift your weight back distance between the feet is more than shoulder width so we're going to pick the foot up and step it out again into a bow stance so we're back in a bow stance we're going to again we're going to turn uh, the body direction 90 degrees to the left so which means we're going to turn the right foot in by 45. shift weight back slightly because it's only going to turn 45 degrees shift weight forward more than shoulder width between the feet, pick up the foot, step it out again, into a bow stance. Now we're going to go forward into, a, into another bow stance. Shift weight back slightly, open the front toe, the left toe to 45 degrees, check that your crotch is rounded, that your knees aren't collapsing in. Shift your weight in the direction of your left foot, and then step out into a bow stance. So we're in a bow stance with the uh, right foot forward, which we call a right bow stance. So let's back up and do a few more of those. So we're in a right bow stance, right leg forward. We're going to now, I want you to add your arms. Uh, but if you don't feel like it, that's fine. I'm going to add mine so you can see more clearly which way my, um, my body is turning. We're in a right bow stance. We're going to go straight ahead. So I'm going to shift my weight back slightly, turn my right toe. You can see my chest is beginning to open. As I shift my weight in the direction of my right foot, my chest opens even more. It's about to the corner now. Heel touch with my left foot, shift my weight forward into a bow stance. Change, go to another bow stance, same direction. Now open the left toe to the corner, 45 degrees. Shift your weight forward, step through, shift forward, heel, ball, toe, bend knee, and stop. So just a reminder of the things to think about when we do stepping. So uh, with stepping, there are three things to remember. One is the sequence. So when we go forward, it's heel, ball, toe. So I land heel, ball, toe, and actually when my foot comes off, heel comes off, ball comes off, toe comes off. So it's always heel, ball, toe going forward. Uh, the next thing is 
we move smoothly and evenly and it's as if you're walking thin so keep moving smoothly from one to the other and don't pick up the foot very high and step through but don't drag it either and the last thing which is probably the most important thing is when we say we step heel ball toe we land with the front leg straight the back leg is bent start pushing with the back leg that'll flatten the foot so it's not that the foot flops down it's the back leg beginning to push your hips forward keep pushing that'll bend the knee so let's do a couple more bow stances let's start uh, with the left leg forward this time so we're in a bow stance shift weight back open the left toe to the corner shift your weight in the direction of the left foot step through now pushing with the back leg heel ball toe bend knee and you're looking in the forward direction again shift weight back open the front toe 45 degrees as you shift forward open your chest to the right corner heel touch leg straight now start pushing with the back leg flatten the foot and then bend the knee and you finish up now the other thing that we talked about is uh, you we've gone through 90 degree turn we've gone straight ahead we can turn around so let's do that so uh, start in uh, if you are mirroring me uh, you would be with in the bow stance with your right leg forward so we're going to turn around and going from this direction to that direction to do that this foot this front foot's got to become the back foot so it's got to go to the corner shift your weight all the way back as this back foot is going to turn through 135 degrees shift your weight onto this foot your left foot or your your right foot step out heel ball toe bend knee and we can go back the other direction shift your weight back pivot on the front foot 135 degrees shift your weight onto that foot pick up the one which is now released so as you come around release your hips pivot on the ball pick it up step out heel ball toe bend knee let's do that again shift weight back we're going to turn the foot through more than 90 degrees so shift the weight all the way back pivot on the heel if you can't make it all the way as you come back turn your feet so that both of them are pointing to the corner pick up the front foot step out heel ball toe bend knee go back the way we came shift turn if you can't make it all the way to 235 as you turn turn both your toes to the corner and heel ball toe bend knee good now let's do some empty stance as you recall with empty stance there are two kinds uh, there's the one which is touching with the ball and so the requirement is the back leg is bent it can be over the knee that's fine front leg is straight it's not locked but it's not here either it's just comfortably straight touching with the ball 30 percent of your weight on the front leg you can also have it on the heel so here the weight is my whole heel my but the ball of my foot isn't touching but my the whole heel is down to go from one to the other we pick up the foot and put it down again we don't roll from one to the other if we're in a bow in a ball touch pick up the foot put down the heel if we're in a heel touch pick up the heel put down the ball okay and with the bow stance you recall we were shoulder width apart with this one it's center line two sides so the feet are on either side of the line which runs between the heels so let's um start well, let's start here we're in an empty stance let's say we're in an empty stance heel touch so we're going to go in that direction so we can just pivot on the heel pivot the left heel 45 degrees shift the weight over pick up the right foot put it down heel touch to go 90 degrees to the left pivot the right foot through 45 degrees shift the weight over and heel touch i'm going to reset we'll do it with a ball touch 
So now we're, we're going to start on the ball. We want to put this foot down through 45 degrees, but remember, we, we have to pick it up first and put it down heel touch, and then we're good to go. So we're starting, let's say, left leg forward, ball touch. Pick up the front foot, put it back down, same place, heel touch, toe to the corner. Up, oh, nope, we're going to go 90 degrees. So pick it, we're in a ball touch, I apologize. Pick it up, turn the foot in 45 degrees, shift your weight and ball touch 30 percent we're going to turn th body through 90 degrees again pick up the front foot change to a heel shift and ball touch now we're going to go in a straight line it's quite easy when we go from heel to heel because we can just pivot on the heel when we start with the ball, we've got to pick it up and, and change it. So you, to get that start with the heel thing. So we're going to go in a straight line towards the screen. Uh, let's start on this side. So we'll start with a heel touch. Right foot forward. So going straight ahead, pivot the right heel 45 degrees, shift the weight forward and finish with the heel touch. Another one, pivot the left leg open 45 degrees, shift forward, finish in a heel touch. And another one, pivot open, shift forward, and a heel touch. Reset. Now we're going to do it with a ball touch. And with ball touch, remember we're going to have to change from ball to the heel. So we are now uh, start on the other side. Right leg forward. Ball touch. We're going to go straight ahead. So pick up the front foot, turn it through 45 degrees, put down the heel, shift the weight forward. Step through, finish with a ball touch. Another one, pick it up, open, put down the heel, shift through, ball touch. Another one, pick it up, open put down heel step through now what we the next thing we talked about was doing the sequence so we can do two steps now with the um, what we've just done we call tai chi walking that's really straightforward when we want to have a bow stance and take two steps our intermediate step is going to be center line two sides so we start off shoulder width center line two sides back to shoulder width so let's do that together i'll head away from you so we're in a bow stance i'm gonna i'm starting with my left leg forward we're gonna take two steps shift weight back open the left toe now we've got this temporary step step heel touch center line two sides move your weight through step out into a bow stance so shoulder width apart and go forward and let's start on the other side with the right leg forward do the same thing shift weight back open the right toe we're going to have an intermediate step so center line two sides shift the weight through and into a bow stance last but not least last week we talked about changing from one to another uh, bow to here, bow to empty, empty to bow, and so on. So let's do those. Let's do a couple of those just to keep them fresh. So let's say we're in a bow stance. If I'm in a bow stance and I want to change to an empty stance, there are two ways I can do it. One, because I need to go from shoulder width apart to center line to sides. So I can bring the back foot in. So shift your weight forward, bring the back foot in, center line to sides shift back if you push off with the ball pick up your foot land on the heel we'll do that again we're in a bow stance bring the back foot in now push off with the heel pick up the foot put down with the ball do it on the other side we're in a bow stance shift weight forward bring the back foot in push off with the ball 
pick up the foot, put down the heel. And on the other side, uh, sorry, same side, but the other way around, we'll push off with the heel, bring the back foot in, push off with the heel, pick up the foot, put down the ball. And so for those of you who know the form, this is all very familiar. So, yep, I see the nods. So that's handstrom lute is one of them, and needle at C bottom is the other one. And so those are the two ways we change. Now, the other way, so, so far we've talked about uh, bringing the back foot in. Um, we can also just do, we, we can bring the front foot in. So we're in a bow stance here. So let's change to an empty stance, uh, face this way. Rather than moving the back foot, I'm just going to bring my front foot in. So that you can also do. So bring the, pick up the front foot, put it down. And in fact, from here, this is how we go from an empty stance to a bow stance, pick up the front foot, step it out shoulder width, go forward. So you can just practice going backwards and forwards from one to the other. So for those of you who know the form, this is how you go from single whip to um, high pat on horse, for example. Okay, I think, yeah, and I think that's enough uh, about this. Um, we could, and ideally we would, but uh, there are other things I want to do. We'll distribute it. If you have 10 minutes a couple of times this coming week to just do this kind of thing, just go from one posture to another and make up the sequence, whatever sequence you like. Or if you can't think of a sequence, just use a part of the form. Forget about the hands. Just focus on the feet. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do these kinds of exercises for the rest of May. Every time we practice, we'll, we'll, we will do this. So hopefully it'll become clearer. And Greg, I'm hoping that gradually every week it becomes a little less obscure to you. Do you or does anybody else have a question about this? Okay. So before we do our waist exercises, I wanted to talk a little bit of history. I want to talk a bit about the Tai Chi Chuan lineage, particularly as relates to the Young family. So this is a timeline looking back into history. The red line is the beginning of the Christian era, so the, or the common era. So we've got the common era and then behind it. The parts, particularly the philosophical parts of Tai Chi Chuan, start really early. So in Young theory, for example, five element theory, the, the, most of the philosophical stuff we talk about comes from Taoism, which is actually third and fourth century before the common era. And then also Neo-Confucianism, which is like the seventh century. So this is really early stuff. And you know, Chinese philosophy comes from that kind of era. Then there are two mythical, semi-mythical figures uh, that you will hear about when you hear about the history of Tai Chi Chuan. Chang San Feng was a, supposedly a Taoist monk in the maybe the 12th century. Uh, he's the guy, there's this famous story, he was um, near the Wudang Mountains, which is sort of a famous place where lots of martial arts are supposed to come from, and he saw a snake and a, and a, a bird, uh, so probably a heron attacking a snake. And the snake was always able to just deflect and stay out of the way of the snake. And that's where this idea of using softness to overcoming hardness supposedly comes from. Wang Chongyue, in some of the stories, was a disciple of Zhang Sanfeng. And he actually is supposed to be the writer of some of the classics. You will hear me talk about the classics, which are sort of these documents that have the philosophy of Tai Chi Chuan. So some of them supposedly come from the 13th or the 15th century. Tai Chi Chuan as a martial art that we know of actually comes from the Chin, fang, the Chin family. And the founder was this guy. I mean, presumably he didn't look like that. That's just a made up picture of Chen Wang Ting, uh, 17th century. So this is a long time ago. The Chin family has a continuous lineage of doing Tai Chi Chuan. They are on the 20th generation now. Uh, today. Now, Chen Wang Ting was important for us because Yang Lu Chan, who's the founder of Yang Family Tai Chi Chuan, learned from 
one of the Chins. He went to Chin Village. At that time, it was the 14th generation. And I'll say a little bit more about Yang Lu Chan. In a couple of weeks, I'll also talk about Yang Cheng Fu. He's the guy who really popularized Yang family Tai Chi Chuan, uh, sort of uh, the beginning of the 20th century. And when we talk about the essential principles, that's Yang Cheng Fu. So these are some of the things I mentioned. This will be in the slides uh, if you want to check out the names. But this is Yang Lu Chan. He's a pretty amazing guy. Uh, he came from a very poor family. We, uh, he's essentially a mythical. We, he existed, but there are very few records. Came from a very poor family. Supposedly, in some, he was a slave, maybe an indentured servant. Um, he worked. He came from the city called Yongnian, uh, where uh, supposedly he worked in a pharmacy. And he saw the owner of the pharmacy deal with some hoodlums using martial art. He was very impressed and then went to this person's village, which is Chen village, to study. Different stories. Some say he went back three times, studied for six years, came back, went back again, studied for six years, came back to Yongnian, but became known as Yang the Undefeated. And in 1850, so you know he was 51, uh, he went to Beijing. And there he taught supposedly the imperial guards, supposedly the princes. And that's where this style really began. And I think the reason why we still practice it probably was just um, genealogical luck. He had two sons, and both those sons continued to do Taiji Chuan. I just, for those of you who like maps, and I like maps, so you're going to see this, just to give you a sense of the geography, um, I've, I've marked Beijing, Yongnian, uh, Chen Village. And the Wudang Mountains. You remember I mentioned uh, Jansan Fang, which is the Wudang Mountains. So our friend uh, Yang Nuchan, our patriarch, came from this provincial village, Yongnian. He went to Chen village. That's 180 miles. There's a lot of walking. And then he went back, and maybe he did that circuit a couple of times. And that, you know, it's it's a long a long way. And then he moved to Beijing. Uh, which is 260 miles away. So these are, as you can see on that map of China, long distances. I'll say a little bit more about Yang Lu Chan in a couple of weeks. But uh, the thing to think about is he was an almost exact contemporary of Abe Lincoln. So that's the period we're talking about, sort of late 19th, uh, yeah, late 19th century. Okay. So now we're going to do our waist exercises. If you have a chair, feel free to use it. I like using the chair because it means I don't compromise my knees when I'm doing this. So we're going to start in the chair and we're going to review the exercises that we did last time. And so the idea with the waist is uh, to, and the, the, the purpose of these exercises is to loosen and strengthen our lower back. And so that's what we're doing here. Now, the waist movements, there are, in fact, three kinds of waist movements. One is horizontal, and so that's this movement. So you're rotating around the axis of your spine. Then there's a vertical movement where you're going in this direction, or this direction, or this direction. So those are the ones we're going to start with. And let's just do this posture, if you like. So we'll start with the horizontal movements. And I'm going to imagine that uh, you're mirroring me. So I'm going to, when I say turn to your left, it's going to be to that side. So horizontal circles, left and right. So one and one and two and two, three, three. Four. Four. So that's the horizontal. Now we're going to do the vertical. You can do that in all sorts of directions. We're going to go side to side first. So one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Now we're going to go forward back. So the chest is going to go forward and back. You see less. But try and keep your hands in the same place and move your chest. So one, one, 
two, two, three, three, four, four. And let's do it on the diagonal. So open your chest a bit to, let's say, your left. Now we're going to go side to side. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. And go to the other side. And again, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Go back to the diagonal we started. Now we're going to do the chest in and out thing. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. And the other side. One, two, three, four. Okay. So what we've been doing is going in a direction and stopping and then coming back and stopping. This is useful to actually, you know, loosen things up, but we don't want to do that when we do Tai Chi Chuan because we want to always keep moving smoothly and continuously. So we need to be able to turn this linear motion into circular motion. And what we did last week, we call the horizontal figure eight. So we moved diagonally out, and then here we moved around in a circle and backwards, and then forwards on the diagonal and then around and forward. So you can see when I go around this corner, I'm both going forward, back, and I'm doing a rotation. And we can also go the other way. So let's do those horizontal circles together. So we call this mixed because it's both this horizontal movement and this vertical movement, we call it mixed. Because of the shape that our chest makes, we also call it figure eight. So this is horizontal figure eight. So I'm going to turn to my to your left, go out round the corner, and then from the front to the back across the diagonal. That's one. On the other side, one. Now two, go to the front and back across the diagonal. And on the other side. And three. Three and four, four. Now I'm going to reverse my direction. So I'm going from the back to the front now and go around the circle and then back to the front, cross the diagonal. Two, two, three, three, four. Four. Okay. So now we've essentially got this, we've turned this circle, th this movement, this horizontal movement, we've turned into a circle. Now we haven't yet turned these movements into circles, so that's what we're going to do today. So we've got this, we go from side to side. I, what I want you to do is come down across a half circle and just go down and out, down and out down and out and on the other side we go over the top and down over the top and down over the top and down you can see where this is going so let's make the whole circle so there's a circle all the way around one two three four and we can go the other way. So let's just go the other way. One, two, three, four. So, so we've turned this side to side thing into a circle. Now the forward back one is the one I find hardest. So what we're going to do is you know we're going forwards back like this what we need to do is to actually make a circle this way with the, the center of our with you know the center of our spine so what we're going to do is start down and up and just go backwards so go 
back and up, back and down. I'm going to move my hands to just show you what I'm trying to do with my lower back. Down, round the back, and then up, round the back. Now we'll do it this way. So from up to down, from down to up, going forward, up to down, down to up. Now let's make the whole circle. So forward going down. One, two, three, four. And go the other way. One, two, three, four. So with this, when we now, you remember this horizontal figure eight, what we're now going to do is add these vertical circles to our horizontal figure eight, and we're actually going to put wings on it. So if you imagine I've painted a figure eight that's flat, I'm going to tilt the wings up. So let's try that. We're going to go down across the middle, up as we go around, down across the middle, up as we go around down across the middle, up as we go around, down across the middle, up as we go around. Change direction, up and then up across the middle, up across the middle, turn around, up across the middle, up across the middle, up across the middle. We'll keep doing this for the rest of our time together in this fundamentals class, but for those of you who know the form, I just want to remind you, your body already probably knows this, this is brush knee. This one is brush knee. The other one is cloud hands, or maybe even single whip. So when you do those movements, you're actually using these circles. Now, one of the things I want to talk about next is, or remind you, we did talk about this a little bit, is why do we use the waist? What is the purpose of the waist? The purpose of the waist, there are two. One is it makes the limbs move. So uh, the, the waist leads the limbs. So when I turn my chest, you can see my arms come along for the ride. And so that's why we learn waist movements, because our arms or our legs is what delivers the energy. So the first thing is we make the limbs move. The second purpose of the waist is it determines how much waist you move, determines where the energy is delivered. So for example, if I'm just doing a short strike and I just move my chest a little bit and stop, that's an energy delivery point here. But if I have a big waist turn, I actually deliver the energy off to the side. And so that's ultimately for martial arts reasons why we're doing these exercises. That's the connection to arm movements, which I promised we talk about today and we'll start today. There's a lot to do. But let, now that we've started doing a bit of waist movement, let's talk about the arms. There are, broadly speaking, uh, you'll see the pattern. Uh, there are two kinds of arm movements. There's swinging, rotating, and mixed. Just like with the waist, there's vertical and horizontal and mixed. So swing. So imagine you're a zombie, and as your chest turns, you're moving your arms from side to side. So this is swing. In fact, there are two kinds of swing. So here, my arms and my chest are moving in sync. But I want you to turn turn your chest to the side and bend, if we're mirroring, your right elbow. Now start moving your chest before your arms move, and then the arms follow. Your chest stops moving and your arms are still moving. Move the chest back, the arms follow. So this is out of sync or out of phase. Move the chest, the arms follow. Now turn the chest first, then the arms follow. Turn the chest and the arms follow. Turn the chest 
the arms follow. Again, I, I'm going to start mentioning these things so those of you who know the form can make the connections when you practice. And if, I hope some of you will be staying and practicing in a few minutes. When we do single whip, this is what we're doing. Moving the chest, arms come to the side. Actually, starting from this side, if you're mirroring, come across and go back. Come across and go back. And so it's this waist movement that's making your single whip arms move. So that's swing. And let's just talk about rotate. Uh, rotate is sort of straightforward. So start with your, actually, it's maybe easier. Let's start like this. Uh, so I'm going to turn my chest towards the back of my hand and turn and rotate my arms. Now I'm going to turn my chest to the other side. So I'm turning my chest to my opening palm. So this is an arm rotation. Rotate, 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 and stop. Now we can do it the other way. So change your arms, but don't change your chest. Now change, move your chest towards the back of your hand. Now we're on the other side. Rotate, 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 rotate. Rotate. Now that we've done that, we'll do it with the arms out like this. So, for example, start with your moving your shoulder forward to the hand that's going palm up. So start one hand is palm up, one hand is palm down, and they're going to flip. And move your shoulder towards the hand that's opening. So you're giving something to somebody. Rotate, 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 rotate rotate and flip. Now, the shoulder that goes out, you get the top of your hand goes out the other way. Rotate, 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 rotate. So what we've done here is the two kinds of movements. We've done swing, which is this way, in sync and out of sync. And we've also done rotate, 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 rotate. There are many other variations, and we'll talk about them in the coming weeks. But I just want to start with those. If you have a chance to practice those, that would be great. Let us stop there. Hello, Shaman. Bye, Tian. 老师再见。